My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. It has just stopped raining for the first time in two full days so I've taken the opportunity to go out for a walk and I've just seen that one of the hand railings along the alleyways here has been decorated for Christmas. This has made me wonder what else has been decorated for Christmas. Let's go and have a walk around town and find out. Ideally, I would do this at night time so that we could see all the Christmas lights, but we have a curfew and we're not allowed out after six o'clock, so I can't. So we'll just have to do it in the daytime for now. This morning, Elizabeth sent me a little video. She'd gone out for one of her walks down into town and she sent me a little video to show you of the Christmas displays in one of the shop windows. Hello, I wanted to show you this beautiful window decoration, Christmas from Umberto Caro because on my walks in the morning when I pass here this gives me a little bit of Christmas spirit and uh, hope and that everything will be okay although we are in the red zone already quite long and this is a difficult year for everybody but it's beautiful also for us here to have a little bit of happiness here. Bye! Now I'm down at Piazza Molini and it looks like I've just arrived in time for the decorating of the Christmas tree. saw Casa and Bottega the other day in my shopping video. They've possibly got one of the best window displays to be honest with you. And that seems to be pretty much it for Christmas decorations around town so far. Just heading down to the beach to see if there's anything. There's normally quite a nice decoration in the shop up here, but they're getting it ready at the moment. He's, he's in the window with a hammer, so that's not ready yet. And let's see if there's anything on the beach. Here, just coming down to the church, all of the flower beds have been planted with little Christmassy flowers, which are very pretty. And there's definitely not much happening Christmas-wise down at the beach. There's a few lights around the lampposts, but that seems to be it. I'm just taking the long way back home. Look at the colours here, isn't this beautiful? As I said, I was just walking home and I came across this lemon and I had to stop because it was bigger than my head. And he's just getting the key to open the gate so we can see it closer. Because from outside, you can't really tell how big it actually is. These lemons are for show, they're not really for squeezing. You're not going to get much juice out of them. And if I put my hand there, you get an idea of how big it is. Just so that you can see that it is pretty much the same size as my head. It reckons it's about four kilos, that is ridiculous.
we are in the garden today. It's a beautiful sunny day. Carlo's off work so he's faffing around with his leaf blowing machine in the background and I have dug all of my old soap making stuff out of the basement. I am currently on the hunt for titanium dioxide and I can't find it anywhere. Um, that's a white powder that you'd use for colouring. I have a feeling it's in a box in the garage at Dad's house in England. I'm just hoping it's here somewhere. I'm going to keep looking. I've dug out my old safety goggles, which definitely need a wash. They're rather opaque at the moment. I found some red colouring, so I'm going to use that. Just need to find some white. Another thing to bear in mind is that I have not made soap for about eight years. Um, once we moved house and everything got packed into boxes, it stayed in boxes <laughs> up until now. Uh, I never found anywhere to keep these boxes other than the basement, so they sort of got forgotten down there. Um, so yes, I'm going to attempt to make soap. Carla's going to film it for me so I've got my hands free and can concentrate and we'll see what I end up making later on. Whether I'll be successful or not is another question. Just found another box in our mini attic and I think this could be it. Yes! Yes, 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 that's exactly what I wanted. And here are all the other colours. Oh, I'm so glad they are not in England. This stuff gets everywhere. I've hardly touched it and I'm filthy already. But before we make soap, we have decided we are going to dismantle all the old tomato netting and vines here because they need to be get rid of and we're going to make it into a giant chicken playpen. Sistemiamo puliamo questa zona per le galline. Sì. Allora iniziamo a togliere prima questo, ok. Poi togliamo tutte queste cose qua, le ammucchiamo là e poi rimettiamo la rete in questo perimetro, così le galline non hanno tutti questi impedimenti. Va bene, ok. We are always finding footballs in the garden because the kids up in Montepedusa play with them and if they make a mistake they come rolling down the mountainside and normally end up here. So we've got quite a collection. This is not much of a fun job. This is going to take absolutely ages actually because all of these tomato plants are tied to the vine with these little plastic tapes that Luca uses. And these all have to be cut off before we can do anything else. This is going to take all day. And I'm putting them all into a bucket. About 15 minutes later, this is as far as I've got. This is going to take forever. Carla is taking off the little um, tapes and taking off the plants at the same time. I'm just taking off the tapes. That is one row done. A few more to go. Right, I've done it. Taken all the little plastic tapes off and now we've just got to dismantle the whole lot. The netting will get used again next year and the year after and the year after. That has been used many times so we don't throw any of that away and now we can build a giant chicken pen. But now it's definitely time for lunch and it's not going to be anything special because it's already half past one. I'm just going to cook some tortellini in broth which um, we've got in the freezer. They're fresh tortellini that I bought in the pasta shop in Piano di Sorrento and I can just chuck them in boiling water and in about five minutes they're ready. Easy peasy. Lunch is ready. Okay. You know you're going to be let out in a minute, don't you? What are we doing? 
Turns out we haven't got enough of this to go around the whole thing, so we're going to have to make it a bit smaller, but at least it's extra space for them. And there's all sorts of weeds and herbs that they can go and peck at. They've been shut in all day. Come on in. Oh, look, it's all different. How exciting. Obviously, ideally, I would just give them free run of the whole garden, but unfortunately, they are pigs in disguise and they would eat everything. They'd eat all the lettuces and all the greens. Um, and we can't do that because Luca would not be very happy after all his hard work. But at least they're not shut up in cages like a lot of other chickens. Uh, <clears throat> we have an escapee and it looks like we're about to have another one. What's this? Naughty chickens. Hi everyone, today me and my friends are going to buy a Christmas tree for our boarding house in our corridor. Um, so I'm going to take you on this little trip to Tesco's and we're going to try to find a Christmas tree that's really cheap. Wish us good luck! No swearing. Definitely get these chocolate ones. So this is where we're going to put the tree and now we have to decorate it. This is our Christmas tree and his name is Roger Weaselman. <laughs> <laughs> scented cold processed soap. My ingredients are going to be olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, avocado oil and a little bit of palm kernel oil which is from responsible sourced palm kernels um, and then water and lye. I'm now going to mix up the water and lye which means I have to put on my gloves because lye if it splashes it stings like hell. And my sexy glasses. Oh my God, these are completely opaque. I can't see out of them. Right, I'll put them on after I've measured everything. I'm a little bit nervous. 380. 138 grams of lye. Now, while the lye is cooling down, I'm going to measure out the oils that I need. Shea butter. Now, this makes the soap very moisturizing and I'm putting in quite a lot of this in this recipe. So I've got my oils in my pan and I'm just gonna melt them on the stove top and I'm not gonna let them get too hot because I need the temperature of my oils 
to be very similar to the temperature of the lime water, which at the moment is still very hot, so um, the lime needs to cool down a lot more. That is all the cooking that you have to do when you're making soap. Easy as that. These oils will melt pretty quickly, so once most of it's melted, I will just turn off the heat and then the rest will melt in the warmness that's already been created, if you see what I mean. So I've melted the hard oils, I now need to add the liquid oils, so that's olive oil and avocado oil. This is not extra virgin, it's just olive oil. Um, me, 350 grams, and I'm just going to add that to my melted hard oils. This is my soap mould, Carla made this for me, it's just basically a wooden box with a lid, and I've lined it with um, kitchen paper, and this is where my soap is going to cook itself, it's going to do what it does for the next 24 hours. Okay, we are ready for the next phase and this part I have to now mix the lye into the oils and it will start to slowly amalgamate together and go opaque and then I have to bring it to a trace. I use a stick blender for that and um, once it starts thickening I'm going to stop. I'm going to divide it into separate containers and add some colour and perfume and then we take it from there. <laughs> I would normally be wearing an apron to do this, but I last used my apron when we were canning tomatoes and I have never seen it since, so no apron. And Daniela, if she's watching this, is going to kill me because she offered me two aprons and I never went to get them. Hi. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> oh, no. Bye! Right, we're just going to go slowly here because I don't really know what colour these are going to turn. Let's just try like this. Really matter. Okay, I have no idea if this is actually going to be any good or not, but we're going to hope for the best. Put the lid on that. Now I'm going to wrap that in a towel and stick it in the oven, which I've had on, and I'm going to leave it there for 24 hours, and then tomorrow we will unbox it and see what it looks like. <laughs> My Aspetta, voglio vedere com'è venuto. Aspetta, prima. Oh. Sembra quasi un dolce, qualcosa da mangiare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three days later, and my soap is stuck in the mold. I can't get it out. So we are currently um, trying to dismantle the mold <laughs> to try and get this kilo of soap out. It's set though, so that's one good thing. Dai. Eccolo. Eccolo. È scivoloso proprio come un sapone, eh? Oh. That's why there was a leakage. 
Right, let's see what the soap looks like inside. I'm pretty pleased with those soaps. Now they need to sit and cure for about five weeks. So I'm just gonna leave them on the shelf here. I've just set them out there. They're not gonna be in the way and they will cure and sometime in the new year, they will be ready to use. And then I'll decide what I'm gonna do with them. If you're still here and you've just got to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching all of it. It means the world to me. Another thing you could do, which would make me extremely happy if you haven't done already, is subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything and there's a little heart button down in the corner and you can press that and you will be subscribed. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video, hopefully on Wednesday. Bye.